Blog Talk Radio. Hi, everyone. Glad to have you listening. This is Mama's Time Out, where real moms come to talk. Hope you enjoy the show today, and once again, for new listeners, this is Patty, owner of Little Bites News, Gifts, Party Supplies, and More.com, MamasTimeOut.com, and WAHBusinessDirectory.com, where we offer shopping, child development, parenting resources, and low-cost advertising, <clears throat> along with our social network and live support call show for moms. So I hope you'll join us today and take a mama's time out to learn about building children's self-esteem and um, having an opportunity to ask your questions live or in the chat. And we are here Sundays at 2.30 Mountain and at, you see, that would be 5.30 Eastern currently. And uh, the call-in number is 646-595-4516, or you can join the chat for free. Um, I, our guest today is Arlene Richards and the school marm, who is also known as Mary Taylor, from BingNote.com. They will be discussing building children's self-esteem and also take some Ask the Teacher questions live. So I'm going to check if they're on the line right now and um, have them each introduce themselves briefly. And then we'll go through some questions and answers with them. And then we'll take any callers' questions. So feel free to call in then. And then I'll share some resources. So stay tuned and feel free to join us. Let me see if they're here. Yes. Uh this is Arlene. Hello, is this Arlene? Yes, this is Arlene. And Hi, Arlene. This is Patty um, with Little Bites News and doing the Mama's Time Out show. <laughs> Glad yeah. to have you on. Nice is to um, the, the school marm here also? Hi, Patty. My name is Mary Taylor. I write uh, for the bingo.com uh, blog as the school marm, and that's because I had a long career as a teacher, and, uh-huh. uh, mainly with uh, children who... Uh, didn't quite fit in with everybody else as far as the normal range of learners. So they're in special education. Uh, Primarily the last few years it was with learning disabled children as a resource specialist. So uh, I I have a very deep concern for children who may not think the highest of themselves, but we know that they can learn if they just find the correct way to do that. Right. Right. And there's a lot of children who come from broken homes, and a lot of times that affects their whole well-being and their self-esteem a lot. So so many ways um, the children can be affected by just the life experiences around us. And we don't right. take those into consideration and we put them in a classroom and expect them all to function the very same and, and they're individuals and we have to look at them more in that way. Right. And so I agree. sometimes and their self-esteem uh, suffers because they don't fit in quite as well as the next person. And so that's what we have to really work on is to make sure everybody feels good about who they are and where they are in this uh, life situation that they're thrown into when they go to school. I, myself, this is Arlene, and right. uh, I did a lot of work with uh, kindergarten uh, students because I enjoyed uh, taking them to as far as I could. And they always seemed to um, develop well and have a good year, interesting school year. And uh, that was my goal. And uh, right. the motto in the, in the school was always, I can, I can, I can. And it, they'd go home and they'd tell their parents, well, I can do this. Mrs. Richard said I can do this, so I can. And, and Right. They seemed, uh, Especially at that age, they need, they need that reassurance and encouragement because they're just developing their, their personality and their self-esteem. In my class. So, uh, okay. It says that you, you taught for 45 years in Los Angeles School District. Yes, I did. I did it mostly in the inner schools uh, that I taught. And then I taught the last 10 years um, here uh, with working with children who are uh, home because they're ill. And uh, I go into their homes and work with them individually. And so oh, then, so uh, with handicapped children? or uh, Well, most of my children 
and I'm sorry to say have cancer, something oh. like that. And so they're home. They can't go to regular school because they, uh, you know, they're too sick. And, uh, you know, they could get even sicker when they're in with a bunch of other kids. So mm. I go to their home and work with them. But um, they really enjoy having somebody come in. It makes them feel like they're still going to school. They still have part of their life is still going on while they're still back and forth to chemo and whatever have you. And I think right. That's well, that's important to uh, feel connected to to uh, the world and you know society, of course. And so uh, you had. Um, so you didn't really retire. You're still teaching. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's why it adds up into all the years, the almost 50. <laughs> yeah, well, that's great. I don't know how you do it. I, I taught for maybe about 10 years total. Um, I went from preschool to computer lab teaching into elementary teaching up to fifth grade. And uh, kindergarten was probably my most challenging grade for me. <laughs> So I really commend you on that. Um, I really enjoyed second and third grade, which was the last grade when I left teaching um, when I was pregnant with our first son in 2004. So my dad was a teacher and my uncle was a teacher, so I kind of came from a family of teachers as well. So uh, it's kind of neat to uh, talk to somebody else who's been teaching for so long. I, I just don't know if I could ever do that myself. I mean, my dad taught for... I don't know how many years, 25, 30 years at least, and my uncle too, but I don't know. It's a, it's a tough job. <laughs> well, I racked up about 40 years myself in special education, and uh, uh -huh. I, the kids kept teaching me, and that's what I think <laughs> helped me through the years is that, you know, I started seeing them more and more as the children instead of the problem, and I think that's a key component to it when you're working in small groups and being able to... Right really work on right. the same individually. Now the programs have changed so that they're not they don't always do this the same way as in the past. They're working with them more in the classroom. But right, they're mainstreaming them more and I right. think that's kind of a, it's kind of a good thing, but at the same time they don't get that one on one that a lot of them still need. Well part of the problem is in the uh, regular classroom if you go in to work with them they're more self conscious. They're still being right. told that they need more help. And the big problem is that when they're in, like when they're in the, the small group or maybe just one or two with you, I always tried to make them feel as if they were the top man in the class. And in that small group, they could be. They could be the last man on the totem pole in their classroom. But in my room, they could excel more than anyone else. So that was quite a break for them to see themselves as winners. And I think that right. I, I both have that desire to help children, no matter where they sit within the spectrum of learning, that right. they have value and that we respect them. And I think that's a big part of what we try to do. Mm -hmm. Well, and it, so is that how you and Arlene came together? You both worked together in the school system as well, or did you meet somewhere else? Yes, we worked together in, in the school system. I was in the kindergarten room, and she was in special with her special children. And uh -huh. we were spending lots of time with each other. And then we started... Uh, even after both of us retired, we uh, kept talking and so forth. And uh, Mary was very influential in uh, getting Bingsy started. She helped me a lot with, I'd say, how do you think of this? And she'd say, oh, I think you could word it this way. And she's really good with words. As you can tell, if, if you ever read our blog, she does most of the blogging. And she's excellent uh, at, at, at blogging. And um, uh -huh. Really, we're very close friends, too. And I say that Arlene, uh, we'll pat each other on the back a little here, but she really was inspirational as a kindergarten teacher, and you talked about how difficult that is. And she could get very young uh -huh. children to excel, to me, beyond uh -huh. what I would expect them to be able to do, but she just instilled such confidence in them that they could do it. You know, that right. Of, well, no, you right. Can't. And a lot of them, you know, they they want to they want to try, but then there's some that will get frustrated and want to give up easily. And you just have to keep, you know, giving that I can um, think I can think I can attitude, just like the book, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But also to, you know, what one child can do may not be the same as the other child, but that that is okay. It is mm -hmm. okay not to be the. Uh, the star of the program, you can be the, the backup singer and, and get a lot of enjoyment out of it. You, and I think we have to appreciate where each person fits into the to the 
overall picture. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And so then, um, did you both collaborate on the book that thingy um, for business, busy building self esteem, or was that something that you did on your own, Arlene? I wasn't clear on that. Well, I uh, wrote the book. I wrote the book, but and writing it every now and then, I'd say, "Hey, Mary, what do you what do you think of uh, of this?" You know. And say, oh, uh-huh. that's good, or you know, I say, or oh, might add, change that word here or there. But I, I brought her in the very beginning when I was uh, writing the book, and she knew what my desires was and what I was trying to get across to the children. And uh-huh. oh, she, you know, well, I did offer any um, insight that she had in it. And my part of the writing came in uh, with the activity book that's going to be released in a few months. And oh, okay. And that is to support the builder-uppers that are listed in the book and uh, uh, with fun activities for children and some of the, some reading so they can have some poetry in there. Well, that may be a stretch. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll call them rhymes <laughs> that, mm-hmm. I, that I made in order to, to, to make a point and then little activities to go along with them. So parents, it's a time that parents can talk with their children, kind of the same idea as the book as far as supporting uh, parents are, are uh, the adult with a child to engage them in, in good communication skills uh, about meaningful matters, you know, things that children may not ordinarily just start talking about, but you can bring it out of them through these activity sheets. So that's where I have fit into to the, uh, the process of, of making a, a complete package for being uh-huh. Good. Right. Well, sounds sounds like a great great product and a great book to uh, definitely get your kids. <laughs> and and both the book and the activity book are are focused towards ages three to seven. Is that correct? Right. But you know, the theme of believing in yourself goes on. We hope that once they develop that and they believe in themselves, and that uh, through the years they will remember some of these rhymes and remember to say, uh, you know, I can, I can, I can, or uh, you know, it's it's just starting off, but it's starting off on the right foot, giving you uh-huh. uh, the, uh, a feeling of success, and that what we hope will continue through the years. So, uh, yes, it, we say the seven, but eight-year-olds. In fact, uh, I have a video coming out with uh, two girls doing a hand jive to to one of the songs, and the mothers they're actually nine. They just one just turned nine. And she said she loves the songs in the Beansy book, you know. And she said yeah, that's she's, she's nine. She loves to sing those songs. And uh, hopefully you'll see uh, the little video on our site coming up pretty soon. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I've seen your site, and it, it's really cute and looks like it um, has some interesting uh, information. And your blog shares a lot of great resources, too. So people will definitely have to check that out. And your site, again, is beingnote.com. Is that correct? Right, right. It's beingnote.com. And we're going to have, um, we're going to revise it in July. This is our month to do a lot of revision. And so uh, look for some changes coming up here pretty soon. Okay. okay. Well, that sounds good. And then uh, the person I actually connected through to contact you was, I believe, your daughter, Lisa. Um right. And she also contributes to the website as well? Oh, yeah. She's a big contributor. She helps out a lot. She does a lot for us. You know? uh-huh. so I'm really pleased with her. Yeah, so she helps with uh, more of the business management side of it? or The, the marketing, the business end of it. Yes, she does. And so uh, uh-huh. um, we were going to have products in, uh, on our website. We have the cute little aprons for the kids and smocks and some other things that we're going to have with Bingsy on it. And we eventually hope to have a little Bingsy doll that will say something like, believe in yourself, or I can, or... Yeah, it's a cute like cute character. And uh, did, where did you come up with the character idea? Well, actually, the uh, illustrator came up with, it, with the uh, idea. We wanted to... Uh, uh, everything I do and have done has been with music. And I, I wrote the little songs to go in the in the songbook, and I used old old tunes uh, so that the kids. I know the tunes the children like those tunes, so it seems to fit in really well with today's children too. So um, since I do everything with music, he has musical legs and mu- and uh, musical arms and things like that. So it just mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Well, now the designer came up with your. We, you really came up with the idea for it, and then the artist uh, is the one who brought it to 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 the way he looks today. But but you had the ideas of why how you wanted them to be. You want something that would show uh, a nice big smile and big eyes that see everything around them and musical ha uh, feet and uh, arms and legs. So Arlene had the ideas, and this uh, the illustrator Louis Zimmerman put it together. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, other people have had input on uh, making the doll. It's going very mm -hmm. cute. Yeah, it's a cute idea and uh, kind of a happy type of character. <laughs> yeah. So um, I wanted to go ahead and ask you a few other questions that um, were on my list here um, regarding uh, how you see today's children compared to yesterday's children that you worked with. Um. I, I hear from teachers now in the classrooms, it, it, they seem to be having a, here in Los Angeles, having a little harder time uh, than we did uh, when I was in the classroom. One thing, the children are exposed to um, so much electronics and um, uh, computers and things like mm -hmm. that, and parents are really busy with uh, everybody's uh, parents are working, so I think it... it uh, kind of, um, it's not as easy as, as the job was before. And we have mm -hmm. all these high standards that, you know, everybody kind of followed. And I, I get the feeling that it's not quite as easy in the classroom for some of the teachers. How about you, Mary? Uh, I think that we probably have always had some of the problems we have today, but now we just have a lot more of them as far as, mm -hmm. we, you know, society's added uh, burdens on children and the pressures they have. and the fact that we've uh, children are, for one thing, sexualized so young now because of having to caution them about all the the, the problems that exist and people who might cause them harm. So there's a certain mm -hmm. amount of innocence that seems to have gone away that that was always there. But I think probably back in the day where they had a one-room school, uh, that you could still find children who are who have a, a wide range of, of problems that we still are dealing with today. But I, I basically want to believe that little kids are still just little kids, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, a, a big problem, I think, is that when we see a, a someone in the second grade or third grade, we go, oh, they're so big. No, they're not. They're eight years old. I have shoes older, you know. So it's mm -hmm. still very, very young. And sometimes we lose sight of the fact that we ask an awful lot of very young children. Right. Um, let me see. Can I have uh, each of you speak up a little bit? I had somebody in the chat say that they were having some troubles hearing. Um, so maybe if you can both speak up a little bit um, more. I don't know if it's you know the phone lines or what what the problem is, but just to make sure everybody can hear. Have you guys speak up just a little bit louder? And um, we'll try that. that we'll we're working on a speakerphone. Is this not? Are you? Can you hear me better now? Um, yeah, I think, yeah, if you just speak up then and maybe get closer to the speakerphone, that might help. Because, yeah, I know when you're on a speakerphone, it does kind of take away from the sound quality a little bit, unfortunately. So, um, let's see, uh, how has the educational system changed over the years? Um, either one of you want to answer that or both? <laughs> well, we, we have Arlene? a lot of emphasis on reading right now and, uh, um, with No Child Left Behind. We have a lot of emphasis on reading. And here in our schools in Los Angeles, I think we're taking a, uh, away from some of the music and the science and some of those kind of subjects that we have. And so um, other than that, I, I, you know, I think it's probably pretty much the same. One of the things I like to do uh -huh. is go to schools now and, and do art and music with the kids because they don't get as much of that as they had before. But I think one of the problems in the classroom with teachers is that they have so many things added on to the what we used to would have a complete schedule, and they keep being told, well, uh, do this for 30 minutes or do that for 45 minutes, and they go, where? In, the t in my schedule, can I find the time to do this? So I think teachers are very, very pressed to fit everything into a day and into a week. 
So to me, mm-hmm. that's the biggest changes I've seen over a, a, a long period of time is the expectation uh, and the demands on, on there's so many testing uh, programs now that they have, and like uh, mm-hmm. those I left behind, I mean, there's a lot of, of expectation going into that, and, and teachers are not always funded well enough to get the uh, resources needed to, to uh, do the very best for that. So I think we do have some problems that are going to have to be addressed in, in, in a mm-hmm. very serious way. And, of course, classroom size. Uh, I know in the old days, way back, right. uh, you know, they could have 40 in a classroom, and people might say, well, they used to know. They probably had a lot of children who didn't get the attention they needed. Mm-hmm. So uh, smaller classrooms really help in giving teachers more time to develop their skills because they do learn on the job along with the preparation they've had. Right. Yeah, and the, even now, though, a lot of the class sizes are still growing, and so then they had to, you know, span out with charter schools and all that to try to alleviate the public school problems. And I guess it's helping in some cases in some areas. But, you know, for me, I think 22 kindergartners is still too many. <laughs> oh, it is. That's right. It's a lot. Right. So yeah, because when I last I taught kindergarten, I I was at a charter school and I had about 22 of them, and that was too many for that age group, especially. So it yeah. was quite challenging. I had 30, uh, 38 when I left, wow. and then they reduced oh, wow. it now. But but like Mary was saying, all these extra things that they ask the teachers to do, it, it, there's just no time to do it. Whenever something. Right. Is, problem. They say the teachers, the schools, they can handle it. Well, the teachers only have so much time to teach, and and so it comes off of recess and music and art and all those subjects are just kicked to the side. Right, yeah, and that's a shame because, you know, the kids really need all that, too, and, you know, that's still a learning environment as well, so. And it's also a time for them to relax, you know. They don't get, they can be very stressed. I think we forget how stressed little children get. And it can mm-hmm. come out in, in the poor sleep patterns and irritability and and conflicts between each other because they're under a lot of stress and they need those moments of enrichment where they can just relax. And I right. think kids having more fun at school with the reading and I mean with the reading of course, built in with activities of music and art. Right. Right. It's all academic focus now and uh, too much testing, I guess. I think mm-hmm. so. Yeah, right. Yeah, and then everything goes into portfolios now, and the teachers have to maintain all that, and it's just getting kind of crazy, I think. I mean, they're nice for the parents to have something, but I think most parents kind of keep something like that anyway. I know my dad did, and that was long before the whole idea of portfolios came in. So, If portfolios are used correctly, it can be a, an asset in the classroom. If the teacher and child really look at how they're progressing, if they really see the first effort and then see how they how they've improved over a period of time, it can be very reinforcing for a child and help build his self-esteem because he sees he's made progress. But it's when we get bogged down in putting too much in it and making too much of it that pa- uh, teachers get overloaded with the idea of it. Yeah, right. It's uh, It can be a great resource tool, too. And then just something for them to look back on and, and feel accomplished and, you know, see things that they did when they were younger. That's right. I know I, that's something I, I enjoy looking back on. My mom came across my folder not too long ago when I was looking through it. I was like, wow, I, this is what I did. <laughs> so it's kind of neat. And uh, so what is something you suggest? I'm sorry? I said that made you feel good even as an adult, so you can imagine. Right, even as an adult, you know, it helps build, helps build your esteem and make you feel good that, to see that you did, you know, some neat things when you were a kid and kind of feel like you can still create. <laughs> right, right, right. I found a letter I had written as a child to uh, a, to an older sister, and uh, it had some misspellings and everything like that, but I didn't focus on that. I focused on the way I wrote. I had I was writing all of these things, you know, just as if I, I don't know, it was very uh, good for me to see that as a child I wanted to express myself. And, and so you can look at for different aspects in a child's work, not just the accuracy of spelling and writing, but what are they saying? 
how well are they getting their thoughts across? So I think that's right. part of the parent we need to see more and more of, of what, uh, not just judging it on, on strict little rules, but leave it open for that child's right. individuality and always looking, right. yeah, and the creative, creative thoughts they have. Right, so the creati- creativity and content should come before worrying about the spelling. That can come later. That's correct. Yeah. They can yeah. get spell check someday. <laughs> right, right, and nowadays they have spell check and you almost don't have to worry about it, but <laughs> most, most writing's done on the computer now. So what's something you would um, suggest to Arlene and then um, Mary um, to parents about helping their children succeed in school? Well, of course, with me coming from a preschool kindergartner, as to give them um, positive thoughts, help them to develop a positive attitude about it, about themselves, that they mm-hmm. can succeed when they start school. Uh, they should come in there knowing that they can do these things. Maybe you can't do it today, but mm-hmm. you're going to learn how to do this. And, you know, my my kids would come in saying. I'm going to learn to read, and I said, yes, you are. You're certainly going to learn to read this year. So they have to have a, come in with a positive attitude, and parents have to foster that at home all the time, build them up. Because, you know, sometimes another child will say something to, a, to, uh, to another individual and make them feel bad. So it can come from anywhere. It can come from another child. It can come from a teacher. It can come from home. All of these right. negative feelings can come into a child's life at an early time. So uh, we need to just really build on establishing uh, positive um, thinking skills. Right, and just reminding them of the things they can do and that it, it takes time and everybody has to go through it. I mean, like, I know we were, we're, we're working on uh, teaching our preschool son how to uh, you know, ride his training wheel bike and uh, he had one fall the other day, and he's like, I can't do it. And we're like, you can do it. You just rode all the way around the park and the block. So well, find them what they can do and the successes that they've had and that they can do this. And, they will. and you know, it's amazing. They do believe you. They do. They have, at early age, they believe you. And so if we start right. training them up with some positive thoughts, they'll, they'll succeed in life. They'll go ahead, and they'll try, and they'll do the best that they can, and, It'll work out for them, but when you give them nothing right. but negatives all the time, or and they begin to feel negative, and I've had students that just say, "Well, I can't do that. I, you know, uh, uh-huh. it just just keeps going on forever, and the child probably never will succeed at anything." Right. It's build up this. Well, and then how how do you? Um, oh, well, I guess I'll let Mary answer that question, and I'll ask my next. Next question. Uh, Mary, what, what do you suggest parents do to help their children succeed well, in school? Yeah, I think they really need to make sure the kids get enough sleep at night because mm-hmm. that, that can, can really make a difference in the day's activity. Uh, I know if I don't get enough sleep, I feel it the next day. It's the same with the child, and it can add up and be accumulative where it really has an impact on them. And I would say right. for a parent, don't panic. You know, if you get if a child isn't perfected and isn't doing things as well, maybe as the older child or as quickly as the cousin, don't panic and don't accuse and don't try to make all these excuses in front of the child over why he can't do something because he's just like his dad. You know, his dad couldn't mm-hmm. do it either. I mean, th- that type of thing, I think, instills in a child an excuse for not being successful. Well, I can't because instead, mm-hmm. just understand that they're an individual. Don't fill the child, I'm giving you some negatives, I guess, and saying don't fill the child with fear and anxiety, you know, because if you're anxious about the child and always reacting to every little thing as if it's, uh, you know, life-threatening, and it's really not, then uh-huh. you're, you're, it's filling something in that is just, is, it's very harmful, and they can have a lot of fear and anxiety that we aren't even aware of, and it comes out again, and and sleeplessness or irritability and crankiness with the other children. Mm-hmm. And then just as parents, I would say don't give up. Hang in there, follow, be consistent with what you do, and uh, follow guidelines that make sense to you, not just something that you hear and then, oh, I'll try that. Uh, things right. make sense. Right. Encourage oh, the children. That sounds know. good, yeah. So, um, 
fast. Now I forgot what that other question was that popped into my head. Hopefully it comes back. It wasn't the really one I had had planned that I had uh, wanted to ask. So um, with that being the... I'm sorry? I have a question I'd like to ask you. Oh, sure. Um, in our blog, we usually blog for parents mostly, but I'm thinking of one day uh, having Mary, since she's a good blogger, do something for the children. Do you think that that would be something that to uh, that parents would bring their children to the site and and find something for the children on on the blog? Oh, I'm sure they would. I mean, are you talking about more resources or actual activities? Or? An act- activity or something for the children, something kind of pitched to children that they could uh, interact with on the blog. Yeah, if it's something, Maybe, you know, uh, uh, age appropriate. Yeah. Activity or something like that, that one day would be designed to that parents would uh, bring their children onto the site. Yeah, I think, you know, anything can work. A lot of parents are always going online looking for resources. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to try, and it definitely sounds like an idea worth, you know, putting up there along with the activities that you already do have up there. And, um, if you you know, that way you can try to get more interaction with the uh, visitors who, who come to your site, too. Yeah, I was hoping so, that the children say, oh, it's um, Wednesday or it's Tuesday or whatever. Uh, let's see what school mom has for us to do. <laughs> right, right. Well, and maybe with, you know, especially like the preschool kids that are wanting to get ready for school and they're getting excited about it, and you mm-hmm. know, that might be a good way to kind of mm-hmm. get them in that mode of, you know, going to school mode. You know, they have an activity to do. Because that's kind of what I've been doing with my son because we're hoping to get him in preschool this year. So I kind of do an activity page with him each day and, you know, he gets all excited now, and he wants to come in and do a page. And <laughs> oh. So, so uh, yeah. Is he doing the Bing thing? <laughs> um, no, I haven't actually started him on that yet, but I, I should. <laughs> like so, it. yeah. <laughs> we'll play the yeah. song for sure. He'll, he'll enjoy the songs, and uh, I'm sure he'll enjoy the songs. So uh-huh, yeah. Nothing else. And then, you know, uh, it's a book where you read one page and talk about that and talk about it for, you know, a couple of, it's not something that you sit down and read through the book and um, right. I wouldn't suggest that you just read through it. You read uh, one builder upper and you talk about it, do some activity sheets and so forth, and then, you know, go on to another builder upper another day or so. So you don't have right. to read the whole book. But uh, I think they would just enjoy when you're on a trip driving somewhere, stick the CD in and let them have a little bit of their music time and sing along with them. They're really easy songs to pick up. Right. Yeah, I, you know, I try to get my son to like listening to music more, but he doesn't like it when I sing, so maybe that's, he kind of doesn't like to hear music. So. <laughs> maybe yeah, if I don't sing that long. <laughs> when I sing, he doesn't like to hear it, so then he says, be quiet, you're annoying me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and then he tells me to turn it off, so... Maybe I better not sing and let him just listen. <laughs> well, I think the little Bingsy songs, they're easy to catch on to, and they're public domain songs, so most of them, so they're oh, okay. well known, and you can hum along maybe. He'll let you do that, but it, it reinforces yeah. can-do attitude, and, you know, that's one way. They they can learn so many songs, and children who have difficulty um Learning a lot of times will be able to rattle off a lot of these rap songs, so it's it's a lot of motivation what they get interested in doing. So, little music has to be one of the key components to learning, I think. Right. Yeah, I agree. And you know, because it has a lot of rhyming words and you know the repetition and the melody. So, hopefully, he'll he'll start to enjoy it and appreciate it more <laughs> as he starts school. And <clears throat> okay. I, I'm you sorry? Record him and let him sing and then uh, <laughs> play him back and let him enjoy hearing himself. That's a good one for children. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's starting to want to sing the ABC song a little more. He didn't. Uh-huh. He used to not He used to not even like singing that. I was like, man, what, what's going on here? He doesn't even want to sing the ABC song. And so I'm like, gosh, what am I going to do with him? <laughs> also, uh, I used to interpret for the deaf and... So uh, I used to teach the children how to do the ABCs in sign language, you know, and uh-huh. 
uh, you know, teach, and that's uh, another blog entry I wrote about teaching signing to, to very, very young free language children. And uh, I haven't found a child yet who didn't enjoy signing to music. So uh, mm. you might try that with him too. And when he's starting to learn the letters and, and to learn the sign that goes with them, it, it just adds that other motor skill. It adds a motor skill to the visual. And right. Other, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because he, he's a really active boy. I mean, I guess most boys probably are. <laughs> I sometimes think he's really active. I don't know. I'm going, boy, I have one of those boys that uh, used to kind of drive me crazy in the classroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, I've got one to send to them. Well, you may have. Yeah. If you do, you'll have to, to deal with that and, and working with the teacher to find ways to help him so that he won't uh, let that interfere with his learning because it can until they learn stuff. Yeah. You still offer yeah, cause, yeah, right now, you know, I mean, I of course, he's just turned four, so he's still at that age where he's pretty, you know, self-centered, of course, and, you know, everything's his. And <laughs> right. Well, he'll grow out of some of that. He'll grow out of that. Right. Well, and, and he has a new little brother now, so I think Ooh. he's starting to kind of learn a little bit more, you know, than he was. He was used to being the only one, too. So oh. I think once he starts preschool, it'll help a lot more, too, with all that. So... I'm hoping anyway. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Uh, progresses a little bit because of the baby, you know. That's a difficult situation to give up that baby spot, even at four, right. you know, to suddenly right. have to be the older one. And and right. when you look at him compared to the baby, he seems half grown, but he isn't. He's still just a little guy. I know, I know, because I, I keep thinking back. God, just, you know, a little over a year ago, he was still in diapers. <laughs> you know, he... he uh, finally stopped using diapers just before he turned three and so it's just like wow he was just a, he was our baby just a year ago you know that's right so. and he still yeah, is. well he still is <laughs> yeah right we'll enjoy he them still is yeah they're cute so um so um why do you think it's important to include the musical cd i guess you kind of touched on that already um with uh the music and the learning going together yeah, uh, is there anything else? The more mod modality that you get in, uh, a child interested in, the more body parts, the, the seeing, the hearing, the um, putting as much into it, the learning activity, the better off you're going to be. And right. There they can be tapping their toe and seeing and listening and hearing and doing all, all these things together, and it just makes for uh, a better learning situation, I think. Right, they're more interactive, so they're more involved. Right, yeah. the, the touching, the tasting, the, all of those uh, senses that you can involve in learning, uh, the better, um, uh, the more success you will have. Another right. blog, if I could mention it, is uh, I wrote a, a blog about uh, barriers to learning, and I think that it, that would be an important one if you get a chance to read it. Still, your children are young now, but in looking to the future and, and uh, I think parents who are who are who struggle with homework with children, if they read some of that maybe that would give them a couple ideas that would help them through that. Yeah, what was the title of it? Well it's in our uh, Inspiring Children blog and it's uh, I believe it's homework hints for children. Homework hints. Homework homework hints? Okay. I believe that's the way that one is listed. Okay. You'll have to look that one up, and I'm sure a lot of parents will want to see that with the school year coming up fast. <laughs> yeah. So the new okay. school year will be here before you know it. I don't I don't know if any of them start in July, but some may. Um, you know, because there, there's some that are year-round schools, I think, still. And what are your feelings on the uh, all-day kindergarten programs, Arlene? Um, after being a kindergarten uh, teacher for so long. Well, I think it's probably working pretty good. Uh, I haven't been in a, the classroom since they started that all day, but mm -hmm. um, I always wanted, uh, always felt my kids could handle an all day situation, and uh, I was cramming so much into the three hours, so it would be an easier situation, I think. And I think it's a good idea. I think it's, it should work well with the mm -hmm. kids. My kids. Yeah, I think it probably, really, I think it should kind of be an option for parents myself. Because I, I did teach an all-day kindergarten class, and there were some kids that 
I don't think could handle the all-day atmosphere because they got so tired. And then, you know, you try to put a nap time in there and, you know, they just couldn't nap because there's other kids around them and, you know, too much distraction for them. Mm-hmm. And so I I they would be kind of fussy because, you know, they would be there. Some of them would get dropped off at 6 o'clock in the morning for their before-school program oh. and then be there all day and then be there for the after-school program. And I thought, God, that's just too much for these kids. Yeah, it could be. So, it could be uh, for yeah. uh, the little ones. You have to really judge the children, and like you say, you know, it should be an option. It should be optional. If if a kid yeah. is not quite ready for all of that, maybe he should uh, or she should be in a different situation. You know, it doesn't fit everyone. But um, right. Well, that's why I'm kind of you know have mixed feelings on making it become a national change. You know, with all day kindergarten across all the schools. You know, it seems like a lot of schools are moving in that direction, and I just feel like it should still be up to the parents, and, you know, they know their children better and what's going to be best for them, if they can handle all day or half day. An idea might be if they had the first semester half day and then the second semester all day, they'd give them a little bit more time to mature and be used to a school setting. I don't know if it's ever tried. I I just thought of it, but, but that to me would make more sense. Right. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I don't know if they've tried that either, but I wondered what your thoughts, you know, considering you both worked in the school system for so long and and uh, with kindergarten particularly, what your thoughts on that were. But, you know, it is a, they're still really young at that age, and I know, like, you know, when we used to go for half-day kindergarten, they still had nap times, and now they're having them, you know, do academics almost all day, and it's like, oh. wow. Yeah, I and, know. It, it has really changed uh uh, and the test scores aren't showing that all of this is is uh, helping, you know. It just seems like the more they push it down their throats, the, uh, the further behind the, the test scores indicate that the children are falling. So I don't know what the answer is. But we've right. uh, got to have happy children out there. And we've got to have right. happy kids too. If they're, if they're frustrated and angry or whatever, uh, then they're not uh, probably getting the best results in that classroom so it's right kind of, it's got to all be worked out but right um, yeah because from my experience i just thought there were some kids that just weren't ready for that especially if they were getting dropped off before school because the parents had to get to work you know by seven or eight. Oh yeah and uh you know that just was too much for those kids for sure because you know one boy in particular he you know he became a behavior problem because he was just so tired and cranky by 10 o'clock oh, you know? <laughs> That's what we said on the on the blog that cranky kids from they they're tired. It, you're not going to have success if the kids are tired and warm. Right. And right. And then it ends up disrupting the whole classroom environment. And I was just like, ah, oh, this this isn't working with this boy. But you know, they wanted him in that program, and mm. I don't know, it wasn't a, the best idea, I don't think, for him. No, no, it's 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 an individual thing, I think. Right. So. So. Okay, um, let me see uh, if we have any other questions from any anyone in the chat room. And I'll see, um, I'll relay them to you. Or uh, Do you have the Internet chat room open yourselves at all? Or? Uh, no, what, what, what is it? Um, I think you go to bingnote.com and uh, could, could make a comment on any of the blogs and, and we'd get back to them in that way. Okay. Well, then I'll go ahead and share. Have you share your contact information and how people can um, find additional materials? Do you want to go ahead and share those uh, resources and information? Um, It's just basically the um, Uh beingnote.com, and uh, you can find um, the blogs and. after it's redesigned, there will be more available, and that should be within, I think, the next month. It should be ready, and it's opening up more, more uh, product lines and, and resources. So that will, that's something in the works right now. Right. Right. So hopefully by July, the end of July, they'll have much more to see when they go to the to the um, website. Right. Well, that'll be good then. So just basically uh, go to bingnote.com and they'll find all your resources, contact information, 
and uh, materials that you offer for children. And right now your focus is on the um, three to seven year age group, but it could work with older kids, a little older kids as well, I suppose. Right, right. Yeah. One of the if the interest is there. <laughs> we have a Tuesday uh, a treat, we call it, and that's a really great time to uh, find additional resources uh, that we have listed and uh, they're very good and they, we search for things that, that uh, parents and teachers could go to to find uh, help and I know one, uh, I, I really wish I'd had it as a teacher myself, ABC, uh, mm -hmm. dot, abcteach.com and it was just filled with so many, so many things that could help a teacher and parent. So if they go to the Tuesday Treats and click on see the ones that we have put in there. Right. Okay. Yeah, I was I was checking some of those out myself, and you do have some great um, sites that you've come across, and I'm always looking for sites like that myself. <laughs> so, so uh, well, I appreciate both of you being here, and um, I didn't see any questions being relayed in the chat room, so I guess uh, if they have any reason to contact you, they'll go ahead and do that through the uh, through your website. Okay. And uh, if you have anything else that you both want to share, you can um, do that, or you can stay on the line while I share some other uh, recommended sites related to building children's self-esteem, or if you need to go somewhere, I can let you go. <laughs> okay. okay, yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's uh, enjoyed meeting you, Patty. Yeah. Okay, it was nice talking to both of you, and I'll be in touch with you again soon, and, and hopefully uh, talking to you again soon. Okay, thank you. All okay, right. bye, Arlene. Bye. Bye, Mary. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. So, uh, once again, that was Arlene Richards and Mary Taylor, the school marm, from bingnote.com, and they offer quite a bit of information and resources and activities for children um, on building children's self-esteem. So make sure you check them out and if you do have any questions, contact them and I'm sure they'll be more than willing to help you out or lead you in the right direction. So um, again, the live call in number is 646-595-4516 and uh, if you um, have any questions that you would like to call in um, now regarding or have any comments, feel free to do that or leave your comments here on the uh, site in the comment section and let us know what you think of the show. And here are some of the sites I'd like to recommend you check out, which came up in the top searches for children's self-esteem. Um, there's kidsource.com, and they offer articles on strengthening and supporting self-esteem in children. And then there's a story on self-esteem and what it means to feel good about yourself in this article for kids from kidshealth.org. So do a search for self-esteem on that. And then uh, the way people who are important to children and how they treat them and what they say will raise or lower your children's self-esteem. So learn more about that and how you can keep your children's self-esteem up by visiting the nncc.org site. And I can't remember what that abbreviation was for right now. I should have wrote it down, but I'll have to check that. And I will add all these resource links on the blog later on during the week, um, hopefully in the next couple days. And then uh, another site you'll want to check out is childparenting at about.com. Well, actually, it's .about.com. And about.com, of course, offers lots of resources on a variety of topics from children to parenting to computers. So it's a great resource site there. So you'll want to check that out. And then uh, moreselfesteem.com has other ideas for parents and teachers on developing children's confidence, as well as ericdigest.org and assortment.com, spelled with an E, for tips to boost your children's self-esteem. And then mentalhealth.sam.org, 
HSA.gov has publications on building children's self-esteem, which is an important quality that your children need, of course, for better mental health and future success. So make sure you check that resource out. And then finally, cyberparent.com offers um, more ideas on building children's self-esteem by listening to them and praising them. And uh, self-esteem, of course, grows with discipline. So uh, you want to make sure you're consistent in that area and trying to use positive forms of discipline rather than punishment. Um, I know a lot of parents, and my husband included, still want to enforce everything with rules and regulations and, and punishment, and that's not always the solution and sometimes makes the problem worse. So you want to uh, try and use positive forms of discipline before, you know, using something more severe. You know, you give your children choices, and a lot of times that can take away a lot of the uh, conflict. Uh, like if your child doesn't want to go to bed, you can, you know, suggest or give them the choice. I can say, do you want to brush your teeth first or put on your pajamas first? Or do you want to read a story first? Or do you want to uh, say your prayers first? Or how, you know, whatever your bedtime ritual is. So, Sometimes just giving them choice and letting them feel like they're in control helps make them feel more confident, helps make them feel like, um, you know, they're in control of themselves and you're, and you're not always dictating to them. You know, because nobody likes to be told what to do. So when you start doing that, people start turning off their, their ears and, and uh, going their own direction. And I know I'm one of those people. I don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> so when somebody starts nagging me, I just look the other way. So I'm sure kids are the same way. And then um, I want to go ahead and let you know uh, about our future guests. Oh, and again, the resources will be on my blog at littledicenews.blogspot.com. So I will be sharing those later in the week or hopefully in the next couple days as time permits. Um, our future guests for the month is coming up on July 20th. I will have Becca Marsh, who is a certified parent educator, discussing positive toddler parenting. And um, then financial advice will be discussed in August with Sharman Lawson on August 10th. And then I'm having a back-to-school special with various guest speakers coming up on August 17th. And there will be a few different guest speakers coming on then to share their insight and experiences on a variety of topics um, from tolerance to, uh, gosh, I'm trying to think now, tolerance to, well, just a variety of topics that your children will need for the school year, huh? Sorry, I'm getting kind of uh, off focus here. Um, then on August 24th, uh, I have an author um, who will be discussing video games as a positive family activity. Her name is J.L. Gibson, who wrote Damselflies. Um, based on a video game, and then uh, that will be on August 24th, and of course we're here at 2.30 Mountain, and the live call-in number is 646-595-4516, and all shows broadcast live bi-weekly unless otherwise posted. So like I said, we have a special show coming up on August 17th, so I will be on from August 10th, August 17th, and August 24th. So that will be three weeks in a row next month. So make sure you sign up for our newsletter. Keep up to date on the upcoming show schedule. And set reminders at blogtalkradio.com at Little Bites News for future shows. And subscribe to the uh, newsletter or our updates at our blog at littlebitesnews.blogspot.com, which I'm actually considering switching completely over to that rather than doing a separate newsletter and just using the blog to do all the communication um, just because of time limitations. And it seems to be a better way of getting the information out to everybody quicker and you know, with less hassle. And so if you'd like to be a future guest speaker, submit your bio and photo or logo along with your site contact information and your discussion idea to me at admin at mamastimeout.com with guest speaker in the subject field, and I'll contact you with further details. 
to uh, arrange your live interview, or I can schedule pre-recorded interviews on um, certain basis, on a you know, limited basis. So uh, again, don't forget to join our social network for moms of all ages and stages as well, and uh, share your insight on parenting there, and get advice and tips and make friends with other moms of all ages and stages um, from the mamastimeout.com site. You can click to join the social network. So I uh, look forward to uh, meeting you and, you know, meeting you over there. So it's another way for us to connect and get to know one another. So thanks again for listening and to uh, those who participated for joining us. Thank you to all our listeners and future listeners and, of course, to Arlene Richards and the school mom Mary Taylor of BingNote.com for joining us today. And I look forward to talking to you again. So make sure you bookmark us and sign up for reminders. And you can also send comments and suggestions to our listener line at 602-457-2761 and or leave a message here. Um, the listener line is a 24-7 voicemail system, so... I will get your message. Just make sure if you do need me to contact you, you leave a message with your contact information, name, phone number, email, the easiest way to contact you. And uh, have a great week. Hope to see you again next time for some Mama's Time Out.